Welcome back to the channel, Bridging the Gap Student to Engineers, where professionals provide advice to students. Today in this video, we're going to go over the data from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, or RPI. Um, the school's in New York, and they provide some pretty decent data, although it is a little bit outdated, so let's um, get right over there. So RPI provides their information on hiring statistics um, on the website for their Center for Career and Professional Development. I'll provide this link in the comments to the video in case you want to do more than what we've done in the video itself. So let's get started. So the first half uh, or first portion of the website is a bunch of links to different reports. Unfortunately, most of them require a login. So um, if you know somebody who's at RPI, you might be able to get access to them. I wasn't able to when I was doing this video, but we will come back to the starting salaries report um, because I know that's available later. Okay, if we scroll down to the next section of this dynamic dashboard, um, you'll see that it provides pretty quickly here uh, location for um, they call it future plan survey but this is really like we've seen in a lot of other schools where it's after graduation uh, what are you doing where are you working um, are you still looking for a job are you in grad school those types of questions so um, this is for the entire school and while we know that RPI is primarily technical uh, we are going to filter just for the School of Engineering some of these other schools, including ITWS, which is um, related to information technology, are related. And if you are looking at um, going into IT um, or one of the majors that are in there, please use the link in the video um, to get to that data. So I'll do that filter. But the next thing that I want to um, f focus on is the dates here. Um, it says in the description, but also when you go to filter, what you'll see is this data is from 2020 to 2021. Um, these are the graduates that uh, completed school in the height of the pandemic. If you look at a lot of other schools that provide like five-year data, what you'll see is a pretty big dip in the positive outcomes during this time period. So I am going to assume that some of the data that we're looking at for RPI is because of that and it is really unfortunate the school hasn't updated their data because I have confidence that um, the numbers would be better if they were showing 22 and 23 data. But one thing to note about grads that graduated in the pandemic, the, the reason that that time was harder uh, was because the economy was uh, you know uncertain about what the pandemic was going to be doing. Uh, companies were changing a lot uh, and the economy was more constrained. If we're if we go into another session or period of time when the economy is constrained, um, it, it may end up with similar results. So just something to be aware of um, as we're comparing this. If you're looking at another video or another website, another school's data for 23 data, um, it's probably going to be looking better than this. Um, okay, so having said that, I'm going to go through the data that we have available and um, just make some comments where I think that things might be different um, in today's data rather than in the heavy COVID era data. Okay, so the first thing to look at is the map. Um, that's the first thing they provide. So RPI is in New York. If you look at these numbers, there's huge 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 percent of grads stay in New York. Um, there's a big chunk that goes to California but when I did some sorting for major that's basically aerospace and IT grads that go to California. Um, but what we're not seeing with RPA, RPI data is a pretty good distribution of graduates going all over the country. Typically that's what we see um, even on a regional school, you'll see the region that they're in plus kind of like all across the country in smaller numbers. This is not that. Um, and what this is telling me is that RPI tends to be much more local. And if you are looking for a job um, in another state, you're, you may have a little bit more trouble getting there. 
uh, we might be able to see that a little bit in the employers, but it is something to think about when you, you know, you do graduate and you're 10, 20 years out of school and you're living in Idaho. If you say you went to RPI, uh, there's probably not going to be as much name recognition as um, if you were to stay in New York um, or if you were to go to another school where this uh, distribution of grads is a lot more across the whole country. Okay, and then this donut chart um, is what we look at for those positive outcomes. So in this one we have 50% of students have accepted full-time employment, 34% are attending grad school, um, less than 2% are attending the military, and then what is not labeled here is other uh, those are typically volunteer type activities that um, we'll, we consider positive outcomes. So the 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 left over here is the about 10% seeking employment. If I saw this um, in the post-pandemic world, uh, more recent data, I'd be concerned uh, because this is pandemic data. I'm not as concerned, and I would say that um, there are even quite a number of um, schools that have 90%, 92% similar type numbers of placement rates even in like the 22, 23 years. So this is not a bad number. One thing that is interesting, and I think this is a result of um, maybe students not being able to get employment, is that we have a pretty big percent going to grad school. Um, a lot of engineering schools, particularly those that focus on making engineers, um, practicing engineers that will go out and be useful in the industry right now, will have a higher number of employment um, right here. So this just means if you're going to school um, at RPI, you can expect about a third of your classmates looking at grad school afterwards and about a half looking at full-time employment. Um, it's not good or bad, but um, if you are looking to go to grad school and you are looking at your undergrad as a way to prepare for grad school, this might be a good option for you because there are a high percent of students that go on to grad school. Okay, then if we go down to the next section of their website, uh, they're pretty nice in that they provide um, what industries their students are in. They also have something that I haven't seen before and that's that you can pick an employer and then we'll give you a little bit more information. So. Um, I'll do that in a minute. And then what I really like to see is the num employers and the number of students they've hired. So uh, because, again, this is COVID year, it might be a little bit skewed in that, you know, companies that have a good relationship might not have been able to hire very many this particular year. But for those companies that are hiring, um, I would say more than two or three grads, um, you can tell that they most likely have a relationship with RPI. Um, they're probably the companies that you're going to be able to get internships with. And here we have a lot of companies that are doing that. So Lockheed Martin, uh, really good aerospace and defense company. We've got um, General Dynamics, a couple different divisions of General Dynamics. So you total that up, they're probably bigger than any of the other schools or other companies. Sorry. Boeing, again. Um, so if you just look through here, you'll see that there are quite a number of, of companies that appear to have some sort of relationship with RPI um, and pull grads from there. Naval Nuclear Laboratory um, is a company that works on the Navy nuclear subs. So they're um, a good employer that's in the um, Pennsylvania area, so close by to the school. Um, so I'll just scroll down here so you can see a little bit. We've gotten down to the two, so I won't get too much farther. But there are a pretty good variety of companies here that appear to have some sort of relationship with the school and are looking for grads from there. And then if we go to um, industries, so just overall, uh, what I'd like to see is that there are some industries that are looking to a school. Um, because that school provides grads that they really like. So biotechnology, um, this is an area where um, biomedical grads in some other schools are not getting a lot of jobs. So if, if, uh, if 
if you're interested in that and you're looking at RPI, definitely check out the major specific and see what those results are. Aerospace um, is a good industry to get into, and that's um, indicated by some of these companies that are in here that are hiring a lot of grads. Uh, consulting, uh, a lot of engineer design engineers um, do end up doing consulting, so that's a good healthy number. And then manufacturing and technology uh, round out the, the last couple ones here that have more than 10%. So I'm going to go to the employer section here and search for the company that had the most grads in the employer section over here. Um, it doesn't really do much for me. Uh, filtering for that. It just shows where the employer is on the list. So if there was something that I was looking for, um, let's say I want to go work for Tesla, do they hire anything, anyone from RPI? It looks like in this one year they did not. But um, SpaceX, I can find them and I can say, okay, they're over here because they're highlighted and they've hired three people. So it looks like this um, employer filter is not as useful as it might have seemed in the beginning, but you can definitely um, search for companies if that's something that you're interested in. At the beginning of the video, I said that we would come back to these reports on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the 2023 salaries report so that we can take a look at the most recent numbers from RPI. So the report itself is a PDF. It is the class of 2023. This is different from the, the data that's on the other website, which is the older data. So this is the latest and greatest information about salaries. I'll scroll down so you can see the whole thing while I'm talking about it. Um, so engineering is our focus. You can see just from here that the low is 71,000 with civil and 94,000 for computer and systems. Those are pretty typical for the high and low majors within engineering. And the school has said that their average is um, about 80,000. Uh, and while we don't know the number, uh, the quantity of students in each of these buckets, and it's pretty easy to see with the numbers that 80,000 is a reasonable average number. Uh, which is exactly what we're seeing from other schools. So if you go to RPI and you graduate, you can expect to get an offer that's comparable to your peers who have just graduated from other universities. And um, as long as you're in that 90% and hopefully higher than 90% uh, that's successful in getting a job right away or going to grad school right away, um, you can definitely be successful with a engineering degree from RPI. That's all the data that's provided from the school and my thoughts on that data um, as it pertains to choosing RPI as a, an engineering school. If you'd like videos about other schools, please let me know um, or videos about other topics related to being a STEM student. Um, we're just about to the date where students are going to be choosing a school for this coming year, so I'm sure the topics will change as we go through the next coming months. Until then, um, like the video please, subscribe so you can get alert on the next one, and we'll see you then.